we do it just for fun. Tonight's meal is an easy but delicious dinner that we have not had in a very long time. And this is my homemade scallop potatoes and ham. I'm using an aluminum pan. I usually use a roasting pan, but we're gonna save on dishes. And I sprayed this with cooking spray. I peeled and thinly sliced potatoes. So I laid some of those in the bottom of the pan. To this, I'm going to add a little bit of flour. I'm gonna sprinkle it over the top just a little bit. I'm not gonna use all this. Ooh. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Earlier today, I diced up some Velveeta cheese, so I'm gonna add that over top of these potatoes. When I was a young wife and mother, I learned this recipe from my mom. And I diced up some ham. I'm gonna add that to the top of the cheese and potatoes. During the Christmas season, I like to buy extra ham and that's what I did this year. I hang on to it and then later on down the road, I like to use some of this ham for this dish. If I think about it, I think it's been about a year. We usually have this once a year, this dish from the Christmas ham. Now I am adding about a tablespoon or less of milk. I'll probably put the full tablespoon on this one just so it kind of coats the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to start the layering process all over again. It really does not matter how you layer this dish as long as you get all the ingredients into it. And I make sure that I go kind of light with the salt because ham is originally salty anyway. I have quite a bit of ham this time, so I'm gonna be adding quite a bit of ham to this dish, which seriously, no complaints, right? This meal is so full of comfort. It's one of those meals that it doesn't take much and you get filled up really quickly. This dish does cook down, so you wanna make sure that you get those layers up kinda high in the pan, because when it comes out of the oven, it's gonna be pretty low once that cheese melts. You wanna end your layers with your ham and your cheese on the top. I kidding spaghetti is perfect on nights that I just don't feel like cooking I like to quickly scramble up some sausage I use breakfast sausage but you can use anything that you choose then I add in some spaghetti sauce you can make homemade if you want to but on a night where I don't feel like cooking I like to make it very quick so I use a jar of spaghetti sauce boil up some pasta you know there are pastas that only take like three minutes. I add one to two cans of mushrooms. Oh, and show your family you care by adding a little side salad. Sprinkle on a little Parmesan, have some garlic bread on the side, and you have a complete delicious meal. This is Crock-Pot Cube Steak and Gravy, and this is a new recipe to us. So in a bowl, I am putting one can of French onion soup. To that, I am adding one can of cream of chicken soup, a packet of au jus gravy mix, and a half a cup of water. I'm going to give this a good stir with a whisk, trying to get out all of those lumps in this gravy. I am adding about half of the gravy into the bottom of my crock pot. Now I am adding four cube steaks. My cube steaks were pretty large, so I really had to kind of maneuver them into the crock pot a little bit and get them down into that gravy. Now I am going to put a little bit of salt and pepper all over the cube steaks and top it with the rest of the gravy mixture. I am going to cook this on low for six to eight hours. When the cube steak was done cooking, it was literally falling apart. The cooking instructions say that you can make the gravy right inside of the crock pot. I decided just to do it on my stove top with a little bit of cornstarch and water. This was one of our favorite meals. We will be having this one many times. 
I have made this dish one other time before and my guys loved it so much they requested it again. This is a skillet meal by McCormick. It's Tuscan chicken. I start out with oh about four chicken breasts, boneless, skinless. I cube that and then I put about half of this packet of seasoning on the chicken and let that cook into the chicken and flavor it. Then I add some drained, chopped, sun-dried tomatoes. This adds really good flavor to the dish. I chopped a zucchini and I'm adding that to the pan. A package of fresh sliced mushrooms. I did not add mushrooms the last time I made this, but I'm glad I decided to do it this time. I added the rest of the packet of seasoning to the chicken and vegetables and I let this just cook together and pick up the flavor. For the final ingredient, I am adding fresh spinach. We really like the texture, the color, and the flavor that it adds to the dish, but this is optional. You do not have to do this if you don't like spinach. On this night, I decided to have some French bread. You can get this for a dollar at the bakery at Walmart. It went really well with this dish. All right, this is a tried and true and loved recipe. This is Kung Pao chicken. I have made it many, many times, and I even have a video with the recipe, and I'll have it linked below. The sauce for this is amazing. Tim came up with the idea to add half the sauce to the chicken, the other half of the sauce to broccoli, and it just bumps up the flavor. I double the sauce for this recipe. I serve it on rice, and it's just good every time. Tonight is chili dogs. I did something a little different that I haven't done in a while and I like to slice the hot dog down the center and add a little bit of sliced cheese to the middle of it. I put it in the oven and I bake them on 350 for about 15 minutes. The cheese gets all brown and melty. The hot dogs just taste different to me in the oven. It's just a nice treat instead of having boiled hot dogs all of the time. Justin requested this one. This is pepper steak. For seasonings, it's just your basics. Onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of salt, and pepper. I chopped up a green pepper and added that to the steak to simmer. I am adding two packs of brown gravy to my frying pan and I am following the directions on the back of the package. While the steak is cooking, I am making rice. Now I am adding two cans of drained sliced mushrooms to complete this dish. A chef salad is so fun to make because every time I make this, I have different ingredients going into it. So it's different every time, but we always enjoy a really good salad with maybe some lunch meats from the deli, boiled eggs. It's just such a good light dinner. I am getting help once again from McCormick. These Swedish meatballs were so good. The pack comes with the seasonings for the meatballs and then there are seasonings for a sauce for the meatballs. To top it off, I sprinkled a little bit of parsley over the top and I served beets on the side. This is slow cooker chicken enchilada soup and this recipe is new to us and it was Fantastic, you have got to make this recipe. In my crock pot, I have six chicken breasts with salt and pepper. I am adding a half a carton of chicken broth or one can. To this, I am adding one can of enchilada sauce. I used medium. Now I am adding a can of cream of chicken soup. 
two cans of black beans rinsed and drained. One can of Rotel tomatoes with green chilies. One can of corn drained. One red pepper chopped and a half of an onion chopped. One teaspoon of cumin. And a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I am giving this a stir to combine all of the flavors. You can cook this on high for three to four hours or low for five to seven hours. Once cooked, you can remove the chicken and either shred it or dice it. I am adding it back to the crock pot to stay warm. This soup is full of flavor and it was delicious the next day warmed up. We served ours with a little bit of shredded cheese, some tortilla chips, and a dollop of sour cream. Don't forget to grab the recipes down below. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you soon.